What's up everybody and welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be talking about the Detroit Lions cornerback, the fifth round pick, Amani Oruwariye and how he played last season. Let's get it started. Welcome in everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And today we're talking about Amani Oruwariye, the Detroit Lions fifth round selection at cornerback out of Penn State. So I thought of a new little series idea that we could do. We've looked at the players for this year's draft, but I feel like that's kind of overshadowed the players that we brought in last season. And I feel like this continues to be a problem and that's definitely my fault, but it's easy to forget about the players that we drafted the year before because at that time for the next season, we're all of a sudden talking about the new players that we're bringing in, right? I mean, we're talking about Swift, we're talking about all these guys, our excitement for these guys. But then again, we probably, we don't really go look back at what our players from last year, right? These rookies from last year did with the Detroit Lions. So I thought, why not go through some of these rookies, see how they play, take away our strengths, weaknesses, see, the, you know, if they have potential, what their role could be next season, what their role could be in the future for the Detroit Lions. And I thought that's a little series that we could do. If you guys want to see more of these, make sure you let me know. But man, we can go through Austin Bryant, all these guys, because even though they weren't starters necessarily, at least not all of them, even though necessarily all these guys weren't starters, there were definitely some games they played in, at least some of them did, not all of them, but some of them played in some games, had some snaps, and we can go look at those snaps and see how they played and see if you think there actually is a future for these guys on the team. So, I thought, why not kick it off with Amani O? Amani O Rubarie, because I think this is a great way to kick it off um, with Amani, because he was definitely one of the most exciting players for the Detroit Lions last season. I mean, over to all the rookies, a lot of people were really excited at the end of the year for Amani. And some people even thought that Amani played so well that the Lions didn't even have to draft Jeff Okuda. They could have just passed on cornerback and rock with Amani and at Desmond Trufant after they signed Trufant, which is kind of crazy, but that really does tell you how surprising this guy played actually last season. I mean, I mean, he played really well for kind of being thrown into a random role later into the season, and he played pretty well for the Detroit Lions. So let's talk about his takeaway strengths and weaknesses. Now, before we get into that, the film part, I do want to just run through his stats really quickly, just so we have, you know, a, a good a feeling of where his stats were. This is a six foot two, 205 pound cornerback that last season on 25 targets allowed 19 completions, which is 76% completion percentage, 221 yards, 11.6 yards per completion, four touchdowns, in a 108.5 pass rating. He also had 19 total tackles, three passes defended, and two interceptions. Those two interceptions were very big for Amani Orari. So th that was his stat line. Now, yes, you're probably thinking and you're looking at it and you're saying, well, that's a, that's a pretty high completion percentage allowed. And yes, it definitely is. Look, Amani wasn't perfect last season. He still has a lot of room for improvement, a lot of area for improvement. And I can see why the Lions necessarily don't want to have him be the starter next year because, you know what, if you can have him sit behind a guy like Desmond Trufant and continue to learn and rotate, because it is good to have depth. In the defense that we play, tons of nickel, you know, a lot of cornerbacks, a lot of secondary players on the field I feel like it's really good to have depth and we know injuries do occur at times so it's really good to have guys that can step in plus you know sometime we could see Amani and Jeff Okuda be the future and if Amani gets to sit behind a guy like Trufant and continue to learn from him and then rotate in and out and get his experience that way when it is time for him to take over as a starter this guy's gonna not miss a beat I mean he's gonna be ready to go he can be really really good kind of like a quarterback sits behind a veteran quarterback for a few years could be like that for the cornerback position and that could be really beneficial for Amani because yeah he's a pretty raw prospect I mean, he was a fifth round pick, right? He wasn't a top pick in the draft. He wasn't day one ready. At least a lot of people didn't look at him as the day one ready cornerback. But he showed us enough promise last year where I think the Detroit Lions looking at this saying, well, this guy could be our future if we give him a mentor, someone to help him out, and we continue to rotate him in and out. Not give him the whole world now, but let him, you know, continue to work it out and uh, learn and get better. So let's talk about him a little bit. Now, one of the best things for Amani last season was, yes, he allowed a high completion percentage, but in man-to-man -man defense, that could happen. What it's really about is, is limiting how far those plays actually go, right? Keeping those plays to a minimum, making good tackles, not, you know, allowing many broken tackles, keeping the plays to a minimum. And that's what we saw early with Amani, and that was what was so great and that's why pff loved him it wasn't because he was shutting out receivers they would catch the football he would just limit those plays so in week 11 we saw Amani get his first action defensively the first time we saw this dude take a defensive snap was week 11 and that's that's kind of crazy to think about i mean it took 11 weeks before he was on took a defensive snap in the regular season for the detroit lions crazy he played nine snaps in that games where he had one target for zero completion so a perfect start for Amani. That's how you get it. You knew he's going to be great day one. And then in week 12, all of a sudden, he gets seven 
76% of the defensive snaps. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good amount of snaps. And that was against Wayne Haskins and the Washington Redskins. And we know in that game, he got an interception. So his first really full game as a Lions cornerback, the dude comes up with an interception. I mean, tell me how that's not a great start. I mean, that is a great start. He allowed three completions in that game for 21 yards and he had an interception. So only seven yards per completion, that's limiting the play. And obviously PFF loved that. And early, man, week 11, 12, 13, you know, 14, those weeks, it looked like Amani was potentially our best cornerback. It really did. PFF graded Amani out higher than Darius Slay through that time period, okay? Because he was playing at a really high level. You know, he played pretty well against the Bears, played in 92% of snaps, only 7.7 .7 yards per completion. So again, limiting the plays, limiting the yards allowed. And PFF looks at that and say, wow, that, that's pretty darn good. Then all of a sudden we see guys like Rashawn Melvin start to get healthy, Slay, you know, get healthy, those guys. And it kind of takes away from Monty's role. All of a sudden he's once again a rotational guy, not necessarily the starting cornerback. So he's rotating in and out. But then we see a little bit of a hiccup, you know, hiccups here and there with injuries. And he steps in versus the Buccaneers you know a little bit rotates in against the Buccaneers and then a week 17 against the Packers we see Darius Slay come up kind of limping he steps in against the Packers comes up with a huge interception and uh, you know his numbers weren't great and I feel like he didn't necessarily finish the year exactly how he wanted to but the weird rotation being a rookie I mean it's kind of a weird spot for him to be in playing against a, a good quarterback in Aaron Rodgers and uh, you know a talented offense with Tampa Bay Buccaneers it wasn't the easiest task for him and you know rotating in and out not necessarily knowing exactly where he's going to play when he's going to play that's tough that can be tough as a player and I feel like he made the most of it. What I want to do now is talk about Amani Oruari's strength and weaknesses. Okay, what I saw he did well last season or what I think that deficit, that necessarily he could improve upon for the 2020 NFL season. And there was definitely a lot of good things that I saw with Amani. Definitely some problems as well, but I feel like some of these problems you can see with a lot of man-to-man -man cornerbacks. And let's talk about what he did well first. Let's talk about what I think he did really well and he showed us last year that, uh, you know, showed us some promise. The first thing is his deep coverage. He's really tight in deep coverage. And that's, and that's what's great. He's not the fastest cornerback out there he's not the most athletic cornerback but his technique is pretty darn good and you can see that on the passes he usually is not burnt he's usually right on the hip of any receiver and uh you know he has enough makeup speed where if he does the wide receiver does get a step he can get right back in that hip and he's right on those man really good deep ball coverage and that's something that i think sticks out to me amongst all of his other routes that he covers when he's in a deep when he's in a deep ball position the dude's pretty darn good usually there's not tons of separation there so that's one of the things that i loved about imani i was like like, okay, I see you, Amani. I see you downfield. That's good stuff. Uh, the next thing that I liked is his ball skills. The dude has great ball skills. All right. And what does that mean? Well, it's coming up with interceptions, finishing off the plays, getting past the deflections, you know, knocking the ball out of the receiver's hands, right? Kind of like Justin Coleman punching out. There's a ball skill coming down with an interception. You know, his interception week 17 against the Packers. He had it, you know, week in and week out. He had a really good one. I think it was against the Redskins, right? Where they threw it to the corner end zone and he was just like right all, right all in that. And that was again a deep pass. He really good against the passes and his ball skills are great even both of his interceptions great I mean the first one basically just took out the receiver's hands that's really good and sometimes you see corners struggle with that and they're just like well that's why he plays defense for Amani this dude looks like he could play as an offensive player at times it's like well he has really good hands and that's not easy to find with corners. I know it may sound like it should be, but it's really not. It's really not. I mean, the two interceptions that he had last year were really impressive, man. That one versus the Packers, that one against Aaron Rodgers. Think about this. It's Aaron Rodgers. This game wasn't a blowout. It wasn't like he was throwing up. The game at the time was 20 to 20. This is a big moment. And Imani gives the ball back to the offense. Now, the offense didn't do anything with it. We ended up losing. But he gave the ball back to the offense in a clutch fourth quarter where he just stepped into a roll because Slay comes up limping. He steps into the roll and gets an interception against Aaron Rodgers on a deep pass. And what I see from him a little bit is kind of like, dude, he has some veteran traits, some vet traits that are like, oh my gosh, this dude looks like he's been in the NFL for a while. He almost like baits a quarterback on deep passes. He feels, I feel like he's comfortable on deep passes. And you can see that if you go watch it back at Penn State. A lot of interceptions, you know, the end zone deep pass stuff like that jumping in routes but man he kind of based it makes it look like it's a little bit more open than it really is the pass versus the green Bay packers i feel like he kind of gave uh the receiver some room there making it look like it was open all of a sudden Roger throws it the dude just kind of goes underneath it jumps up takes it out of the air i mean I'm like dang dude that's like a veteran safety type of move there i see you that's what I love about Imani, man. That's what stood out to me. Very good tackler. I'm not the best tackler. I'm not going to give him that crown yet. I think at this point, it's still Rashawn Melvin from last season. But the dude can tackle. And like I said, limiting plays is really important. And he could do that last season. Not a lot of broken tackles. I think he missed one tackle in the entire year. I think statistically, one missed tackle. Now, he's not the biggest hitter. He's not running anybody over. 
not many people are breaking his tackles. And uh, yeah, that really helps you as a cornerback in man-to-man -man, because a lot of times you're on an island and you need to be able to tackle. So that's what I like about him off uh, defensively. That's what I like about him. He's got good size. Now let's talk about some of his weaknesses. And I feel like this can happen to a lot of corners, especially in our defense. It can be tough at times. And usually you got to get linebackers to help, but they'll spread him out. Slant rounds, underneath routes, he struggles there. And again, I feel like that happens to man-to-man. -man. That's one problem with man-to-man -man, is that unless your linebackers are really good, which hopefully Jamie Collins can help us with and take away some of those under underneath routes and fourth quarterbacks to go elsewhere or maybe they take away the first window that they see and that really helps the cornerback get with them because a lot of times you know teams will run design uh, plays defensively offensively against us where they'll have a you know guy let's say they're on trips let's say they're running trips le uh, left they got the three bunched up wide receivers first out wide receiver would be like an in route and it'll force the quarterback to kind of come around all the receivers and they'll give them so much separation that if the linebacker's not there it's going to be wide open so again that's where it comes down to limiting the play sure he's going to catch it don't let him get any further than that. And that's where it's good with his tackling. But he's not the quickest guy. I think, you know, that's somewhere where he can improve. Maybe get a little bit quicker um, because I feel like that's, that's one of his you know, something that he could definitely improve on, you know, quick routes, underneath slants, in routes, stuff like that. He can get beat right off the right off the step and uh, all of a sudden he's behind, he's trying to catch up. But that's really tough. I mean, that is a tough task to ask. Sometimes in the zone, I feel him, I see him get mixed up a few times. Over there with Will Harris, you know, the young guys, they're just, they're just still learning, you know? So I always got to give those guys slack. But, you know, they're, they're learning. You can tell that sometimes it's like, oh, wait, I was supposed to be there. You're supposed to be there. Then all of a sudden there's a hole. It's like, what the heck are you guys doing? And, uh, you know, they seem okay at times when there's other safeties, but you can tell those guys are all younger and they're just they're learning the defense and uh you know i feel like that stuff comes with time so he doesn't have the most speed not the most athletic cornerback that you will see uh probably could get a little bit better and bump and run i would say he plays tight he plays tight takes the challenge all right he's got the versatility he will line up against any receiver you put him against he'll play slot he'll play out the wide um, and the versatility is great. He just um, doesn't, he's not afraid of the challenge, has very good confidence, very good deep. I mean, he has swagger. I feel like it's just a lot of underneath stuff, a lot of quick routes, just get quicker feet, stuff like that. Keep working on that. But for the most part, man, there's a reason I have a lot of excitement for Amani in the future with Amani because I feel like he could be the future for the Detroit Lions with Jeffrey Okuda. Amani was good last season. Not the best, definitely has room to improve, but he shocked me. And I think, you know, he lived up to a lot of the hype. Like, oh snap, Lions got a steal here in the fifth round. I think he lived up to that. And there's reasons to be optimistic. Hopefully, a guy like Trufant will help. And, uh, you know, by the time he steps into that starting role, he's ready to go. I would love to see him be here for the Detroit Lions future because I think the talent is there. And, uh, yeah, that's Amani Orarbia. Who do you want me to talk about next? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out. Oh, let me know what you guys think about Amani. Before I end the video, make sure you guys click the top link in the description. Go check out Fan of Fan Network.